Okay, we are now recording. Thank you. I'd like to call to order the Town of McCandless Town Meeting for March the 8th, 2021. The Pledge of Allegiance will be led by Council Member Swagger. I please stand for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the, to flag, the flag of, of the United, United States, States of America, of America. And, and to, and the, to Repub the Republic for which it stands, stands one nation, one nation under, God, under God, indivisible, indivisible God, with, liberty with liberty and justice, and justice for all. For all. All right, um, announcements. We have a new staff um, staff member. Um, Bob, would you like to introduce uh, Nick to everyone? Sure, um, and he, Nick is on. Um, Nick Mance uh, started just about a month ago with the town. Um, we've at, uh, changed the title around a little bit. Uh, for you folks that have been around for a while, we, uh, We've historically had a, an HR administrator here. Uh, we've just changed the title to management services and added some other duties. So Nick will be handling our HR, ben our benefits administration and our insurance for us. Um, Nick comes to us from the University of Pittsburgh uh, where he did a lot of administrative and personnel related work. So we're happy to have Nick here. Nick is uh, a 25 year resident, Nick. Is that right? Yes, that's correct. Um, I'm the canvas, so uh, we didn't have to look too far down the road to, to find him. So we we're lucky to have him and we welcome him. Welcome, Nick. Glad thank you, Bob. Welcome. Thank you, President. Really enjoyed working with everyone thus far. So thank you. Great. Good. Um, other um, announcements are, I'd like to remind everyone who is a member of the authorities, the boards, or any of the committees, that we have your community, community service gift. If you can't see, that's our logo that's embossed on this nice um, folder. Those are down at the town hall. You can just run by and pick those up. Um, because of the COVID restrictions, we did not have our appreciation dinner this year, but we are really hoping that better be able to do it this next year we're really hoping so uh please swing by and pick up your gift of appreciation we couldn't do it without all the people in our community that help out um i'd also like to remind everyone uh, that yard waste has started as of march 1st so get those flower beds um all cleaned out and ready to go uh, spring roadside cleanup is april the 10th please mark your calendar for that and you can register for that on the uh, town website. If you have missed the overpopulation of the white-tailed deer in the North Hills, the video is on, uh, which was um, on the 22nd of March, 16th of March, um, that is on our website too. So, so you can see that um, presentation, it was, it was quite good. Um, I would also like to um, announce that John Berdowski is putting together a Hall of Fame for all of our citizen awards. So that is going to be on our town website too. So please keep, a, um, keep an eye out for that. Also, please remember that if you wanna keep up with town events, um, you can um, like us on Facebook. We have McMail, we have our new Instagram. Um, site that is growing. We have our YouTube channel and um, also our website. I'm very proud uh, to announce that McCandless has been chosen as a banner community again this year, 2021. And we were selected by the Allegheny County League of Municipalities. And the des description of this award is um, given to us as a result of our outstanding commitment to professional development prudent physical management, transparency, accountability, and a proactive communications to engage community stakeholders. So very high praise. We are uh, quite proud of that. Um, Carolyn, did you wanna announce about your panel talk? Oh, sure. So we have coming up on March 23rd, 
at um, seven o'clock, there will be a panel um, at St. Brennan's Church over in Franklin Park um, discussing the volunteer, uh, the possibilities of doing a uh, social worker volunteer program here in McCandless. And what time is that? Seven o'clock. Okay. Right. And you know, I can get a link. I'm sure there's something that we can get um, that this will be on Zoom. Um, yeah. Um, that we, yeah. We can hand we, out. Yeah. yeah. So we can have that on our website. That would be that yep. would be great. All right. Um, thank you for that. Um, moving on to the meeting minutes. Um, is there a motion to approve? First of all, are there any additions that need to be made to the um, meeting minutes of February the 22nd? Any corrections? Okay. Is there a motion to um, adopt these minutes? So moved. Okay. Spawn holes and um, Council Member Clunan. Okay. Again, any comments, changes? Okay. Hearing none, all those in favor of adopting the minutes as they are for February 22nd, please indicate by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Minutes are adopted. Um, if you have any public comment that you would like to make, please put your name and your address in the chat box. And as you have signed up, uh, Trisha will um, turn your light on and turn your mic on and uh, we can hear your comment. So um, Trisha, uh, and now is the time for public comment. So uh, I'm sorry, I said Trisha. RJ, um, do we have any public uh, that would like to make some comments? Uh, I do not yet have anyone signed up for a public comment. Okay. All right. Um, let's move forward with um, reports. I haven't skipped anything. Okay. Reports of committees, the finance and uh, personnel committee. Yep, we have two agenda items tonight to review the checklisting number two dated February 1st, 2021 through February 28th, 2021, totaling $1,078,130.20 as submitted to each member of council and posted on the bulletin board and town website. So I don't know if anybody has any questions for Trish on a specific check or payment. Available to answer any questions. A quick question. Sure. Uh, is the the real estate agency fund account is that a new line item, or have I just not noticed it before? It's it's always the last page. So yes. Okay. Thanks. Sure. Okay. Some months have more checks than others, depending on the activity. Yeah. Okay. Any other questions? Hearing none. Uh, agenda item two is to review the monthly financial statements and dashboard report as provided to everybody uh, online in their packets. I don't know if anybody has any questions for Trish on that. This is the report for the for 2021 and the first two months of the year. We're still collecting quite a bit of revenue for 2020. So um, don't be alarmed, as you can see from the comparisons to 20 to the prior year, it, it's consistent. Um, if anyone has any questions, I'm happy to address them at this point. I do, if I could, I just want to thank, uh, thank you, Tricia, for, um, the summary with the, the snow, um, and, um, uh, the weather related cost because they were a little shocking going through the budget, but I appreciated having that extra summary of what was going on and the difference in, uh, the, uh, precipitation that we had the last few months compared to last year. So thank you. Absolutely. I wanna thank Jeff um, Shaneman for helping to accumulate some of those totals. And we included um, all of the labor costs just as a better comparison from prior year to current year, but those costs will move into the general admin as they were uh, budgeted for 2021 going forward. Thank you. Does anybody else have any questions? No, I had one. Trisha, do we know, we didn't really close out 2020 yet. Did, did, no, did we? We, we're, um, we're mid audit. Um, so they were here last, tentatively last week and they'll be here again tentatively next week. 
Um, so we will, we have a 30 day accrual for revenue and then anything else that can be, you know, reasonably attained to 2020 will still be booked as a, as a receivable. Um, and then we're making final adjustments. And so we should have numbers for y'all end of April at the latest. Okay. Thank you. Madam President, I think that's it. Okay. Um, reports from the uh, zoning committee. You have um, some updated reports for the um, the um, construction for at the Sisters of Divine Providence, as well as the 8500 Thompson Run Road. Those are not ready to come before council yet, but just a little a little preliminary. Um, if you have any questions about that, but when they come forward, you'll have plenty of time for your questions. Um, then they're not quite ready to come forward. Um, report from Public Safety Committee. Okay, um, next up we have the Chief's report. I think Ryan's on here if anyone has any questions for him. Um, I'm very excited to see the police website and to see Chief Hawk's Caring Community, um, which is going to be the monthly chief's report and highlighting police training, as well as um, the, uh, the leaders and moving together toward tomorrow. Um, I'm looking forward to, uh, to seeing all those. I'm hoping that we'll share those on the town website also, but I'm looking forward to that. Thank you, Chief Hawk, for doing that. I think that's going to be very informational for our citizens. I'm not sure if you guys can hear me that well, but I know Ryan's having a connection issue too. Any, um... a, a quick question. I'm just not, I'm not seeing it here. Maybe I saw it somewhere else. Um, was there like a citizens, I don't know what it was called, like a citizens police uh, classes? Uh, that's, a little, that's a little later on that's in the agenda. Up. Okay, that's why I can't find it on this report. <laughs> it's, it's a little, um, it's um, under new business, I think. Ah, okay. I knew I saw it somewhere. Um, I will wait until then. Okay. Um, I'd also like to um, inform the, invite the public to follow along um, by participating in the personnel board meetings as a way to understand the rigorous selection process that our police officers go through to be hired um, in McCandless. All the agendas, meet, uh, minutes, and recorded meetings, as well as Zoom invitations, will be on the town website. So we are promoting um, one or two officers, and we're hiring some officers, and we'll really help you appreciate the, the quality of the, um, of the officers that we have here. Um, anything else from public safety? Uh, Ryan was going to tell us, uh, well, share with the um, with council about our meeting that we had out in Hampton last week, um, as they had about 13 chiefs of police gather to learn about the volunteer social worker program that they have there. But I don't, is his, I think his connection's bad. I don't think it's working. So he wasn't able to. I, I said, I'll send him another camera request. There was a little bit of feedback that he unmuted and then I remuted him but let's see if we can get him on mic here i would i would actually appreciate having that in written form too um either from you carolyn or from um just for our just for our records okay and so if ryan if ryan can't get connected hopefully you guys can hear me um I can, they were, we were actually, after the meeting, we all discussed potentially having um, the chief and the, the volunteers come over to meet with us here in McCandless. So you guys can all hear about the program. Um, it was actually very helpful going through all the different nitty grits of what she does with the program there in Hampton. Um, most of her social work program that she's dealing with actually it's not going to calls, but it's uh, doing the follow-up work after the calls and um, just reaching out, depending on the scenario, what's going on um, to offer services 
and um, any fault that she, you know, whether it's a domestic dispute, they actually have, she helps a lot of hoarders. Um, she can give uh, referrals for drug, alcohol, addiction. Um, but I just thought if we could have a meeting where she can come and present the program that they have there in Hampton to council, that would give you guys a better idea um, of what they're doing. And then maybe we can go from there and um, figure out what would work for Mayor Panless. Um, Carolyn, have um, her check her availability and yeah. give her my contact information and we'll see what we can do about getting her on the agenda. Okay, I'll do that, thanks. Okay. <clears throat> okay, anything else on public safety? Nope, I think that's it. Ryan's just saying his, he's texting me, this, his uh, connection's horrendous. He's sorry he can't be a part of the meeting right now. So that's it, thank seems you. To be, seems to be going around. Um, pub yeah. Public works. There are two reports included in your packet. We have Jeff Shaneman here with us if anyone has any questions. All right, I think that's it, Madam President. Okay. All, all right. Um, looks like we have services committee next. Thank you, Madam President. Um, I have, um, I guess, one. Uh, announcement comment, uh, as well as the fact that the fire marshals report the code enforcement violation complaint statistics report are in your packet, although not noted on the agenda, the permit report is also included in council packet. And I just wanted to, as a, as informational, to point out, I think I mentioned it at the last meeting uh, that it was going to occur, but on February 23rd, Fire Marshal Stack, Town Manager Grimm, along with the volunteer fire department leadership, participated in a strategic planning meeting presented by Jerry Ozog, Director of the PA Fire and, Enter and uh, Emergency Services Institute. And um, I would say that I, I, uh, Council Member Schweiger and I were in attendance um, remotely as well. And I would say Many opinions were exchanged. Uh, very positive engagement by everyone uh, that attended. And I expect that council will hear more from fire marshal stack um, as in the future as these new ideas, um, view of our strengths and our weaknesses and our opportunities are reviewed in more detail. And I believe that, I believe that fire marshal stack is here if anyone has any additional questions for him or myself. Councilwoman yes. Sponholtz, I have a quick question. Certainly. Um, and maybe Marshall Stack could answer, but um, in the report for January, I'm just curious how this, how it happens that um, it looks like Peebles is responding to significantly more calls um, than the other departments. I'm just curious how that how that works out. Is it a function of um, geography or availability? Yeah, that's a good question, actually. Um, because, well, first off, they, they have just a little bit more of a busier district than the other okay. two. Uh, they are the ones that run the uh, quick response service, the EMS system. So uh, that's where they're, they're really uh, jumping ahead of everybody that way. Okay. Thank you, Marshall Stack. Absolutely. Hearing no more questions, that concludes my report. A report from the Recreation Committee. Uh, just wanted to remind everyone to tune in to our um, St. Patrick's Day bingo coming up on March 18th. And um, we are still in uh, kind of a holding pattern with some of our bigger events, including Community Day at this time. Uh, nothing has been set, no, nothing's been determined one way or the other but hopefully we will have uh, an answer and plan soon about that. Anybody else has any questions? And that concludes my report. All right, um, let's move on to old business. Um, the first 
item, the only item on our old business is ordinance 1513, the do not feed ear, um, ordinance for wild deer. Um, are there any questions or comments that anyone would like to make on this? Council Member Spunholz. Um, just for purposes of reading it into the record, I wanted to make note that um, we had asked the Environmental Advisory Committee to consider um, the deer management issues. And in this case, in particular, the proposed ordinance um, to limit um, regarding the feeding of deer. And I just wanted to read uh, what I received from them, which was that the EAC recommends the town council approve the deer feeding ordinance because feeding deer concentrates the population and causes excessive damage to landscape plants, particularly of neighbors. The increased density also increases the chance of spreading disease Parasites from feces can be transmitted to pets. Feeding may also cause bloating and death when rich food given to stressed animals and deer car incidents are more likely when deer are attracted into residential areas. Thank you. Madam President. Uh, yes, Council Member Smith. Uh, um, I know from the last time that I had a comment on, on this, uh, you know, I, I basically said I, I thought we should come up with the plan first and then, uh, you know, and then do some kind of ordinance for fines after that. And I still think generally that's the, the way I'd like to go um, overall with things. But with respect to this, it looks like all the citizens who have, or all the residents who have commented on it have been in favor of it. Um, I believe the game commission, the Pennsylvania game commission has recommended that we adopt it. I, and the deer are obviously a problem, uh, you know, regardless of this particular ordinance, the deer are a problem. So, um, so for anyone who had listened to me last time, uh, this time I, in the, in the intervening two weeks, I have been swayed to support the ordinance now. All right. Thank you. Um, is there, um, is there a motion for this ordinance? Madam President. Yes. I move to adopt ordinance number 1513, amending the codified ordinance of the town of McCandless at article 701, animals, to regulate the feeding of deer within the town. Thank you, Council, Council Member Woods. Is there a second? Second. All right, Council Member Swagger. One more chance for any comments or questions? All right, hearing none, all those in favor, please indicate by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Um, new business. Um, do you, we've looked at the subdivision property for Walnut Court. Um, RJ, do you need to say anything about this? Or, I mean, it's pretty simple. You have to divide up the land where the condos are and then that's what, we, that's what we're doing. Yep. You got it. This is uh, number two of, I believe, five total that we're expecting. Um, so I'm sure that lots 103, 102, and 101 will be arriving sooner than later. Any questions for um, RJ about this? Okay. Um, hearing none, is there a motion? Okay. Uh, Council Member Clunan. A second? Second. Okay, Council Member Smith. Again, um, any questions or comments about this? All right. Um, hearing none, all the. Uh, Trisha, did you. Do I need to move? Do I need to read it? I, I was just going to say, do you mind reading it, please? Sure thing. Make it official. Uh, move to approve the pre preliminary final subdivision application for the Walnut Court lot. 104 revised plan submitted by Walnut Court LLC located at 408-416 Walnut Court, lot and block 945-J-140 as per project number 64-03-19 prepared by Trant Corporation dated December 4th, 2020. 
And Council Member Smith, I assume you still second that? Still second. Okay. All right. Um, all those in favor, please indicate by saying aye. 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 Opposed? All right. Motion carries. Um, Bob, has you, did UPMC, are they here to do this presentation? I, I did see somebody from UPMC. Okay. I've, I've got a couple people it? to bring up okay. on screen okay. here, I think. All right. Um, we're going to have a short presentation um, of the UPMC banner um, ordinance amendment application. Yes. And I think that is... There's like a black. <laughs> I have to cover. So I'm I'm sending uh, the camera and microphone requests to the presenters. Um, I'm guessing that this is Mr. Bill Colano. If I got that right. Yes. Bill. All right. I've I've sent Michelle Weltner a microphone and camera request in case she wanted to hop on. Is there anybody else that I need to um, be queuing here? I think we're good. <clears throat> okay. So uh, here I'm going to give you the designation so that when the time comes, you can screen share. Um, do not hit the stop recording button, please. <laughs> um, under no circumstance. Uh, so just for, for everyone's benefit, um, since we have some council members that haven't been here through this process before, uh, you do have the ability to, if you could just hang on on the screen share for one second. So, um, and then we'll we'll bring it back up as soon as I'm done here. Um, so, sorry, it's just for video recording purposes. Anyway, there is a function uh, under our zoning code that allows um, you know whether it's a developer, a private party, um, you know somebody looking to make some changes to our zoning uh, code potentially. You know they have a proposal. They are able to apply um, for us to consider a zoning ordinance amendment uh, for you know whatever the issue is at hand. In this particular case, uh, UPMC Pass Event Campus has requested to be able to put some uh, sort of parking uh, lot light pole banners up um, for some various you know services, branding, things like that. Our code does not currently permit for any type of uh, light pole banner or parking lot banner. So there would need to be a couple um, potential amendments to various parts of the code. If this were to move forward at this first stage, um, the applicant in this type of process would basically be bringing their ideas forward and then council would sort of indicate whether we want to continue um, you know, considering it, drawing up an actual draft and how that interaction goes um, from this point forward. So that's the process that we're starting tonight. Uh, and Michelle, I see that you are on camera as well. I'm just gonna shoot you a mic request. Um, for the benefit of those that have not been here before, um, the way that our security settings work is once I send you an unmute, you can mute yourself again, but without me, you cannot unmute again. Um, so feel free to send me a chat message or anything if you need to shut your mic off, but you should still be you know, on screen on mic. Um, all right, I think uh, I've covered uh, everything. Excuse me, RJ, I don't yes. recall seeing this in our um, meeting documents. Yeah, so actually part of this process is before, you know, we spend the, the town attorney's fees and bill the applicant for an actual ordinance drafting work, um, we want to figure out whether it's something the council would actually want to take up. So there's no ordinance text ready to officially consider, but if what you see on the presentation, the questions that you ask of the applicant, all that information, you know, kind of helps you decide, okay, yeah, head nod, we want to consider these aspects of this um, proposal, then that's when you would start seeing the actual ordinance drafts. Um, I wasn't really looking for an ordinance draft. I was looking for like the information that they're gonna present. It's helpful to me to see these things ahead we, of time. So that we didn't I can have it available. Um, then maybe um, I would just appreciate having them having some information ahead of time in our pack so we have a chance to kind of look over it and um, you know just be more informed than just kind of getting it on the night of. So I, I just appreciate moving forward that we have that um, before it gets put on the agenda. So duly right, noted. So thank, you. thank you. All right, uh, Mr. Colano, I think we are ready to turn it to you. Very good. Should I just hit my screen share button? Now you can. Okay. 
Do you see my, okay, here we are. Do you see my desktop? Yes. Great. Um, we are uh, proposing to have three different banner types added to the uh, McCandless code. And they are very simply serving three different functions. Uh, one of them is a banner in a parking lot that would allow for um, messaging to occur, uh, particularly for UPMC pass event about uh, different things that are going on in the hospital. They would be up for a short duration of time. The second banner type would go on a wall and that might be if a new uh, breast center is opening or cancer center or something more of significance. And the third type is a feather sign and they would be the most temporary and they uh, might be for, um, uh, did I lose something here? Hold on. My screen just went black. Do you still see me? Your, your screen share went down, but we can see and hear you. Okay, um, hold on. Let me hit the screen share again. I might actually be able to just pull it up here myself. I think that that came through my email just now. And the third type is, is a, a feather type banner and those would be used for um, flu shots today. Um, something that's more immediate and of the shortest term. Uh, the first banner that we're looking at in a little more detail is uh, what's on the screen now and is a pole and post mounted banner. And this would be a, a cloth or vinyl material attached, attached to uh, posts uh, that are attached to the uh, light pole. And uh, we are looking for these to be grouped in twos and uh, not more than two banners on a single pole. And we have a height that it should be from the ground of 84 inches. So it um, would be ADA compliant. Um, we would be responsible for uh, the integrity of the pole and the banner and make sure there are slits in it uh, to uh, allow wind to go through. And um, the, we are limiting the size to 12 square feet and a maximum width of two feet. And uh, the banners can be spaced about 100 feet apart. So there would not be too many of them in the parking lot. And we have looked at a variety of different uh, townships and ordinances, uh, not only locally, but across the country. And uh, this uh, 12 square feet is a on the small side uh, of the code allowances. And uh, we're only allowing um, fabric, uh, no aluminum or other plastic materials uh, can be on there. We have a little note about them being uh, properly stitched uh, so that they don't rip or tear and they must be removed if they're faded, worn or torn. The uh, second banner type is a building mounted banner and that's on the left side of the, the uh, screen right now. And we're showing examples of those. And the one uh, in the middle is, is most like what we are proposing. It would be uh, pin mounted away from the building a few inches and uh, stretched to be completely taut. Uh, we are requesting a size of 80 square feet. Um, 80 square feet in the city of Pittsburgh code is what they allow a, any typical storefront to have to identify themselves. And uh, we are limiting um, these to uh, in content to uh, marketing materials, logos, photos, drawings, building identification, directional information, uh, and special events. And uh, again, they're flexible materials. And uh, if they are faded or torn, they would be taken immediately down. And the last sign type is a ground mounted banner. Um, it is 12 square feet with a maximum high, height of uh, 12 feet high. And uh, we have small text in there that says that they can't be in right of ways and they have to be about 15 feet away from uh, any uh, line of traffic or circulation. And uh, again, we're gonna try to have them spaced 
uh, minimally at 100 feet apart. Um, it describes their content. And again, it's more like a, uh, uh, a quick message that would be up for a few days and taken down. And again, there are limits on the type of materials that it can be. Um, do you have any questions? I do. Yeah. Madam President. Um, I'm sorry, I can't see you, Shelly, or is that you? Because I can't it see is. the um, screen. It, it is me. I can't see who's. I'm just going to take the screen share down for now. We can put it back up if we need it for illustrative purposes. Right, Council Member Spawnholes. <laughs> okay, so I have to say. I agree with um, Council President Zachary that it would have been very helpful um, if we had had information preliminary to this meeting because I feel a bit blindsided. But since we've been put in a position where we have to react to what's been presented to us um, without preview, um, I quickly. And, 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 and Council Member Sponholz, we do not have to react. We can merely hear the presentation and then discuss it at a later date, which I would like to have this material sent to us so that we can examine it um, and then um, discuss it at a later date, I think would be better. But please continue. Excuse my interruption. No, no, no. I, would you prefer that I hold my comments to a later date? You can certainly make it. It's your decision, whatever you would like. <laughs> well, since they gave us a preliminary um, proposition, I'll give a preliminary um, response. Um, so, by the way, I'm not necessarily opposed to the concepts that you've provided. So it's not, you know, something like that. However, um, I do think that council, in considering this for future discussion, needs to consider um, what kind of precedent that this may set and perhaps in the UPMC um, setting, it may be viewed as appropriate, but it's, it's nevertheless a precedent that could be across many, many properties, commercial properties in our, our community. Um, I would say that I would prefer to have this discussion in concert with our current plan hope that we're going to be reviewing all of our zoning ordinances. And perhaps this is one of those new things that needs to be considered um, as part of that. And I would also say that um, in that vein, that I am really not in favor of spending taxpayers' money to move forward with the attorney's fees to prepare an ordinance, um, a special ordinance, um, particularly when we are um, actively working on reviewing all of our ordinances and this could be part of a much larger picture. So, um, and oh, I have one question actually, um, because I don't wanna hold back UPMC, by the way, you do great work. So thank you for all that you do. Um, but is there not, uh, or is there uh, the ability for an entity like UPMC to simply apply for temporary permits for banners of this type under our current ordinance? I don't know the answer to that. Um, if, if it's okay, I can, okay, I can offer you the, the answer to the second question. Um, I also just wanted to offer a point of clarification. I apologize, this is my fault for not explaining this at the beginning of this um, presentation. But when, uh, when an applicant puts in a, an ordinance amendment proposal, um, they do escrow money to pay for the legal fees um, as long as the applicant is still interested in whatever might be you know, drafted through the process. So that would continue to the, be the case as long as UPMC is still interested in this application moving forward. Um, again, my fault for not mentioning earlier, I apologize. Um, regarding the permits, so there is an ability to apply for a temporary sign um, that would be maybe sort of like the second type, that wall-mounted banner that was discussed. Um, there are typically limits of 30 days and they would have to adhere to the current sign code. So if there's already another wall sign that's the main storefront sign or they've used up all their square footage, um, that temporary banner would not live separately from those square footage limits. 
Uh, the ground mounted banners, which are the third type, are not part of the code at all. And the first type, which I think has been communicated to me is sort of the primary, um, you know, where this application originated basically uh, way back last spring that they were thinking about doing this. Um, those are explicitly prohibited in several sections of our various sign codes. Um, so part of, if that, you know, amendment were to move forward, part of that would be doing the research to, you know, edit those particular sections that explicitly ban light pole parking lot type banners. Thank you. I think that's all good information for all of council. So um, it sounds like we're going to be talking about this in more detail later. Right. And one thing I might ask is with the uh, light pole banners, there is an initial expense involved in putting up the brackets. And uh, we would like to uh, make sure that we have the, the right to continue to um, uh, be able to put the banners there and not have to come back uh, each time, which is time consuming and, and uh, not only labor, but the, the, the approval turnaround time. And we wouldn't want to have um, the, the brackets to be up without having banners on them. Makes sense. Any other council, um, council member Smith? Um, yeah, so just, uh, and I know we'll talk about it more later, but since you're on the phone, I mean, just looking at it practically, it sounds like the lamp, uh, the lamp pole signage are really more of a permanent type signage. And for the other signs, uh, what is UPMC's thoughts on those being more of the kind of lamppost permanent variety or more of a, you know, we have a flu, flu shot or in today's day, COVID shot, you know, center up and running for the next 20 days. Like what, what is kind of the, just the thought process behind what those other types of signs would be. And feel free to correct me if I'm wrong about the the more permanent nature of the of the pole sign. The, uh, the feather signs that we uh, call them would be the most uh, temporary and they would be up for uh, short periods of time if something is uh, special is happening at the hospital, flu shots, blood drive, whatever. Um, and, and those are things that people might be making spontaneous decisions, even driving down the street whether to turn in or not. And so that's why we would like to have that kind of messaging at the street. And the uh, banners that are on the building would be the ones that would be um, um, more significant announcements. And that's if a new department is opening or a new services is uh, happening in, in the uh, hospital to bring it to attention. And they would not, it's, the intention is not to have them up at all times. Okay, thank you. Sign types that um, UPMC has in different facilities uh, throughout Pennsylvania and other states. And so we're not asking for something that is uh, completely uh, foreign to, to many communities. I can speak a little bit to this too as well. This is Michelle Waltner. I'm the project manager at UPMC um, to answer your question as well. Um, in regards, as, as RJ said, the interest for UPMC is for the light poles, um, not necessarily the building banners or um, the ground banners. That's this is more of a code amendment for for the whole town of McCandless. So it's not we're not asking specifically for UPMC to have these. This is not something that UPMC really desires, but it goes within the banner code, um, which is available to everybody. Uh, you sometimes UPMC uses the banners, the ground banners, um, marketing uses them as far as building banners, UPMC doesn't really, um, in the system prefer to use those. Uh, they are used though. I have said for, um, if a new facility is acquired, um, and they're waiting to get the high wall signs up that says, this is UPMC. Um, they've utilized that before, whereas Bill has said, um, some services available to the community and they want to make it known. Um, they put that up on the banners, but I know the light poles are the exciting thing that McCandless is really looking forward to. Um, they want to be able to use those to, you know, promote their line of specialties available. available. 
um, and let the community know that if Mr. Colano is going in for some treatment and he's walking through the parking lot and he sees that Hillman Cancer Center is available at his, in his backyard, um, just to once again, just to let the community know what they have available in their backyard um, is a big thing. And to continue that relationship with the community, UPMC strives to do that all the time. So um, I have to say that UPMC is more interested in, as RJ said, the light pole banners uh, to mention um, offerings, specialties, maybe fun uh, things going on, community events that are going on uh, with partnership with UPMC, um, things like that. Uh, and having a more permanent basis. And of course they would upkeep them, um, keep them in terrific shape, uh, not let them wear down. But uh, as far as the wall banners and the ground mounted banners, that's more uh, put in the amendment for everybody in general <laughs> as right. part of the, the code amendment, not necessarily that UPMC is asking for it. Uh, yeah. UPMC's interest lies in the light poles. Okay. And then RJ, you might be the person to answer this. My assumption is when we're talking about light pole banners, it's not light poles, you know, town of McCandless. Like these are light poles on private property, not street street lights. That's, right that's correct. Anything that gets put on, on, well, I mean, we have an ordinance that just says you can't put a sign on a utility pole. So those would be excluded. Okay. That's what I thought, just making sure. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you all. They're all within the parking lot. Any more comments or questions from council? All right. Thank you all so much for your presentation this evening. Thank you for your time. Thank you. The next item on our agenda um, is the um, EAC have submitted a project form to create a land a landscaping planting guide. Um, being in the um, planning commission with the developers that come through there so frequently, they have it seems like the same plants that lots of times they use, or sometimes we'll get new plants, or they're like, "We'll plant whatever you want. Just tell us what you want." And um, the planning commission just didn't have a list of what we what was deer resistant, what was native, what was not invasive um, list. And so I asked the EAC if they would be comfortable putting together that list um, for us that we can furnish for developers if they would like it. Um, it this wouldn't be required plantings. This would be recommended plantings. Um, and so um, that's where that came from. And that's where that's about, that's what that's about. This is a project form, just giving them permission to move forward with that. Are there any questions from any council members about that? So this would just be more like in the nature of guidance, just right. Like some of, some of the developers just, just like, we'll put a bush there, we'll put an appropriate bush there. Well, we could go, you know, the bush we'd really like to have there. And they're like, yeah, we'll put your bush there. We don't care. And then you say, well, here are like six bushes you could put there and they're the right height and the deer won't eat them. And they're not invasive and they're not going to kill North Park like those barberry are um, that people plant everywhere. So um, that's, yeah. It's just some guidance. Yeah. Um, more environmentally friendly trees, shrubs, those kinds of things. Well, time? I'm sure it would cut down on some back and forth time too with it developers does. just to have. It does, it does. And I, sometimes I'm just looking on my phone. Oh, wait, no, that is invasive. We, we really don't want that. And it just saves time for us. Yeah. And then. Okay. That makes sense. I think. Uh, Councilman Responholz, that's your committee. Did you have anything you need to add on that? No, I th and I, again, I go back to what I said in the last thing is that um, as we potentially move forward with updating our zoning ordinances and so on, I think that at least this work, this investigative work um, that is going to be based on some really solid sources um, could play a role in um, actually ultimately the town having some more um, formalized 
requirements for development um, moving forward into the future. So I'm just looking for a head nod. <laughs> Actually, the work has already kind of started. Um, <laughs> but at this point, to your point, Council Member Smith, it is uh, really something they're going to put together um, and share with the Planning Commission and Council as a recommendation. Uh, and that's really all it amounts to at this time. I'm sure that'll help the planning commission too. I mean, cause I'm sure they have to look things up sure. themselves. Right. So yeah. sounds, sounds good to me. Okay. So we just need a head nod. Everybody for this. Okay. Anybody against the, um, <laughs> okay. All right. Um, it, it's actually, it says here for a motion. We've been just doing a head nod, Bob. Do we need to do a motion for this? No, that out of habit. I wrote okay. it that way out of habit. Okay. All right. I, I thought we were just kind of doing a... Um... I didn't want to write head nod. Okay. <laughs> okay. Okay. That's a fair. That's very fair. Um, all right. D. And here, uh, Council Member Smith, is your <laughs> discussion um, on the beginning or the organizing or starting the idea of a citizen police academy. Um, Carolyn, did you want to start us off? Sure, can you guys hear me? Yes. Okay, so yes, uh, Ryan, Sergeant Guzzo and I have uh, just recently met to discuss um, pretty much in detail about the plan to have a citizens police academy here in McCandless. Um, and currently we've got a good bit kind of ironed out, but we're, we still have some details to figure out, but we would like to ideally have this, uh, this formed and started by September where we could have a four week program. Um, but we're, we're still not sure on the date, but it'd be a Thursday or Saturday, um, where each day, the Thursday or Saturdays, <clears throat> there would be, um, the possibility for whoever 18 and over would like to come and be a part of the program and each day of the week uh, for these things we would have either training and let them learn about firearms one night or do a ride along um taser instructions uh possibly have a judge uh come and speak about the criminal justice <clears throat> do uh traffic stops uh they can also maybe participate in a skid car training um, where they actually use like these small training wheels on a car. Um, so it also, a lot of this is just ideas because we have to see um, different instructors in towns. So we'd have to partner with them and see who could come to McCandless and help, um, you know, teach these uh, different classes. Uh, we would also have maybe a course on like a, one of the day classes would be on handcuffing, um, canine demonstrations, bike demonstrations, uh i'm trying to think what else we've discussed uh pretty much pretty much anything that would be related to the police department uh a tour going over you know the policies and ethics and everything about the the job here in McCandless. and then ideally at the end of the four weeks we would like to have a um a ceremony where uh in front of council who you know ho however many people participate would would get their award and um, and that would be it. I know today when we were discussing these ideas, um, one idea was to have town council be our guinea pig and like let everyone go through the process of what we would be looking to offer this coming fall. Um, but pretty much this would be very informational. Oh, and then we we're also talking about doing like a junior program. And so tweaking it and specializing for um, let's say middle school, high school, it just depends. But um, obviously they wouldn't be doing ride alongs. Um, but that's kind of where we're at right now. And I think we're just looking to see how council feels about this and if they would give the blessings. Um, I, is Ryan still on? I didn't know if he has anything to add. I will you... see if I can send him a mic request. So like, Can any... go ahead, go ahead, Chief Hawk. Do you have anything else to add? Uh, she covered it a, as good as anybody could have, I believe, ma'am. Um, so 
uh, you can tell Carolyn's very enthusiastic about this idea. And um, so what, um, what our job here tonight is if council feels ready um, from this presentation to give the nod for um, Carolyn, Chief Hawk, and who was the other officer? I've forgotten, I'm sorry. Sergeant Guzzo. All right, thank you, Sergeant Guzzo, to um, move forward and put together a formal proposal to um, be presented to council to approve. Um, and that would be all the details of like what they would talk about and when the times would be and just kind of a, a kind of a formal written proposal for us to look over and, and see if we had any ideas on anything that maybe we wanted to add or um, so if council is inclined to give the nod to move forward with this uh, planning to um, to make a formal presentation at whatever that date would be, um, a written presentation um, for uh, us. Uh oh. Yes, council member Smith. I, I was just gonna say, you know, everything comes with the caveat of, of having to know the price tag of, of what something would be. But I, I love the idea. I, um, you know, if you couldn't tell that I brought it up 45 minutes early, uh, you know, I, I think this could be, I think it could be really great. I think it would be a good thing for community engagement. And um, I've seen some other things on other shows. Uh, one sticks in my head from, it, it was like a, it was a use of force scenario test where they just put residents through like, okay, this is, this is how quickly you have to make a decision. And this is the stuff that it's based on. And it's like live act, you know, like a live action uh, role play almost. Um, and I saw it maybe a year ago and it, it just really stuck with me as something that it's like, you know, a lot of people might not realize a lot of, of these things. And I just think, I, I can't say enough how much I would be excited to, to see this be able to happen. And I would, I would gladly be a guinea pig. And that would be part of the proposal and the associated yeah. costs, uh, the time, uh, staff's time, the police yeah. department time, you know, um, those officers are on the clock, you know, so um, we'd have to, we have to look at um, all of that. That would all be part of the um, program um, submittal to council. So, um, uh, yeah, Council Member Clinton. And I was going to say, we discussed that today. I'm sorry? I couldn't understand you, Carolyn. I was going to say, we also, we discussed that today. Uh, oh, I'm sorry. So we discussed that today and just, uh, just trying to look at the day Thursday evenings would be best based upon scheduling and when we'd have the most officers available to help where they would not have to um, be on overtime for this. Can you guys hear me? Yes. Uh oh. Okay. So yes, we have already we're we're figuring out the cost, and there will be some fee you would have to do. We also have to cover background checks uh, since they would be uh, doing ride-alongs and uh, possibly doing you know doing like the the skate car and different things like that. Right. And and we would and like you said, that would all be part of the uh, present of the. Um, proposal that you would give us. Um, Council Member Woods, I think I saw your hand up. I think Councilwoman Clunan was first. Okay, uh, just very quickly, I, I have worked on these sort of projects before in my past um, in the city of Pittsburgh, working with some of the high schools. And I just hope that I love the idea, but I really would like to see a good deal of attention placed onto where we're recruiting our citizens um, just putting a sign on the door saying, hey, sign up is going to bring, um, you know, I want to make sure we get a lot of faces, a lot of representation, and not just those people who are always um, around town. And I, I feel like this is something so many people could take advantage of and learn from. And I want to make sure there's a real effort that the entire community has the opportunity to learn more about it. And I'd like to see those efforts as part of the plan. Council Member Woods. Um, I just had a question. Um, Bob, you put this letter together. So um, it looks like several communities do this. And I wonder what kind of um, 
uh, you know, we got an outline of like what their program entails, but did they get good attendance? Yes. Okay. Yeah, most, most all, all the time I, you'll see that they are. I add something? I'm not sure if you guys can. Oh, hold on, hold on, Carolyn. Let Bob finish, please. Go ahead. Most all the time the, the classes are full. Here. Okay, thank you. And I, I would like to add, um, Angela, we are thinking about offering the once in the fall and once in the spring. It, given that the numbers are like, we're, we're planning on them being pretty full. And if that's the case, then we would just continue our course twice a year um, as need be. Okay, thank you. Any other, any other comments or questions from any citizens? Um, uh, one point that I would actually like to make is um, in the material that Bob sent us to look over telling us about a police academy, it said that the goal of police academy is to better understand, better understanding and communication between police and residents. So I would like information to flow both ways because that is what communication is. So I, I would like us to not just focus on what the police can teach the citizens, but I would like for there to be something built into the curriculum for let information flow the other direction also. So I would appreciate it if um, you would take that into consideration as you're writing up your proposal. Okay, do we wanna give the head nod for um, them to go ahead and put together a formal proposal to present to council? Okay, all right, looks like you're good to go then, Council Member Swagger. Thank you. You're very welcome. Um, is there anything else on the Citizen Police Academy? Okay. Um, the uh, last one I believe we had, we have our, um, is for the uh, award for the contract for B Brittany Culvert repair. Did anyone have any questions about that before we, or comments before I call for a motion? Madam President, if I can, I'll just give you a little bit more background on this, Perfect. especially for, for those of you who are, um, came on board in the middle of last year. Um, this is a project that we had originally planned to do during 2020, and it had been uh, delayed because of COVID. Um, was one project that we could put off for another year. Um, this is geared toward replacing or providing a uh, protective barrier in a metal uh, culvert that runs under Brittany Place. Uh, it's a cost-effective approach to take for a 50 to 75 year lifespan. Uh, the project would begin sometime um, mid-May, we would expect. Um, uh, National Gunite, who is the contractor under the CoStars contracts, um, will be responsible for all traffic control along with this project, even though most of the work will be done under, under the road um, in the culvert, uh, there'll be some uh, setup and uh, like that will take place on the road. So they'll be responsible for any traffic control and we'll talk through all those details with them between our public works and police departments. Uh, so that will still be uh, taken care of all within the price that they have quoted. And um, you'll notice in the proposal that they had included an optional price for the head wall and outfall uh, wall rehab, both of which need to be addressed um, due, the, due to the condition of those. So that total price of, of 196, 771 includes all of that work for the pipe itself and the head wall, the outfall wall. And um, so again, and it's under budget by about $25,000, $26,000.
Is, are there any questions? Okay, then um, I'll call for a motion to award this contract. Is there Councilmember Woods? I move to award a contract to National Gunite for the Brittany Place Culvert Repair Project in the amount of $196,771 as per CoStar's contract number 41 006. Second. Okay. Council Member Sponhold. Again, any questions or comments about this? Okay. Um, hearing none, um, uh, all those in favor, um, please indicate by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Okay. Um, motion carries. Um, I am going to call for a um, motion to adjourn, but it will be a motion to adjourn to executive session to discuss personnel matters. There will be no further public business um, this evening. So um, is there a motion to adjourn to executive session? So moved. So moved. Okay. <laughs> okay, I think it was Council Member Smith and Council Member Sponhals. All right. Oh, you know what I did forget? I'm sorry. Hold on that. Was there any additional business anybody wanted to bring up? I apologize. Okay, good. All right. So we have a motion and a second to adjourn. All those in favor indicate by saying aye. 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 All right. Opposed? Meeting is adjourned. Thank you, everyone.